This is the Investor Connect podcast program. I'm Hall T. Martin. I'm the host of the show in which we interview angel investors, venture capital, family offices, private equity, and many other investors for early stage and growth companies. I hope you enjoy this episode. Investor Connect is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to the education of investors and startups for fundraising. Please consider donating $100 to the program to help others in their investor and entrepreneur journey. You can find the donate button on the InvestorConnect.org website. Well, hello, this is Hall Martin with Investor Connect. Today we're here with Matteo Scarabelli, director of Insight at L Marks. L Marks is an investment and innovation advisory firm specializing in applied corporate innovation. Matteo, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Great. So tell us more about your background. What did you do before this? Um, fairly standard background, I would say. Um, I'm first generation uni in my family. So there were lots of expectation. Go to business school, join a big corporate, stay there until retirement. And that's pretty much what I did, at least. Uh, at least up until join a big corporate. But realized very quickly it wasn't, wasn't for me. Didn't enjoy the corporate world, so I left. It was 2008, and since then I've been, I've immersed myself in the world of startups, investment, entrepreneurship, and feel privileged because in I've been worked on, I've been working on both sides of the startup table. So actually three sides because I've been both investors, founder, as well as advisor. Great. And so, how do you help startup and growth companies uh, grow? Yeah, we have a structured approach and we do it probably in two complementary ways. So at LMAX, because we are a leader, UK leader in corporate innovation, we help on one side clients to innovate with different initiatives. So ranging from open innovation to entrepreneurship. So helping where the ideas come from the employees to investing as well as acting as a venture builder. And flip side of this, um, we, help start, we help startups collaborate with corporates. So we support them with, again, with go-to-market, with internationalization, uh, but also through fundraising, so directly and uh, indirectly, so helping them fundraise with third-party uh, investment firms and sometimes even with, with operations. Great. So what is the challenge for a startup growth company that you see out there? Interesting question. I think... I see a couple of challenges, so uh, probably one more financial and one more commercial. So on the financial side, I would say uh, finding the right investor because uh, for a number of reasons, so uh, geography is getting all mixed up. So U.S. investors coming to Europe, European going to the U.S. So a few years ago, it wasn't like that. But if you read the news, even recently, so light speed. Bessemer, General Catalyst, they've all been hiring some leads in, in Europe. And I think this is recent phenomenon. I, th- I remember the first one probably was Sequoia just a year ago when they hired someone from, from Axel in London. So, And um, again, connected to the investment is picking the right stage. It's not so easy anymore because... Big funds are going are going multi stage. Uh, seed funds are doing larger tickets. Investment um, engine investor are are getting more professional, so it's all messing up a bit. And the other point about the commercial, I would say, because um, we often work with B two B and enterprise startups, uh, I would say the challenge is customer acquisition, uh, especially with first few clients, uh, even the first few pilots. Um, they're, they're very tricky. Uh, sales cycles tend to be very long, so even 12, 18 months, and the process is complex uh, with many moving parts, uh, multiple internal stakeholders. So it's, it's a difficult journey, especially if you are a B2B uh, company. Right. And how does the startup prepare for that challenge? What's your coaching to them on that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, be genuine, uh, prepare yourself very, uh, very deeply and do a due diligence on the, on the potential customers, uh, and please avoid cold emails, avoid email marketing sequences, especially at the beginning, early, early days, because unless you are at scale up phase, every customer interaction is, 
is a chance for you to get to get great insights. So I would avoid, especially for the first few clients, uh, anything automated because otherwise you miss out on 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 big intelligence that you can gather at that stage. And who should you be recruiting to help with that challenge? That's a good question. I think wise wise salespeople uh, and wise could be could be someone with also experience in partnerships because most of the contract are uh, kind of long contracts so annual multi annual engagements and and the renewal which is very important typically uh, the decision is made up of many factors and is not only driven by obviously by the performance of your product or service but also can be driven by the actual relationship with key stakeholders so and key decision maker if they sponsor you that's also much more likely for to you to to renew a big contract and and that's not only performance of the product but is um yeah it's, it's more complex so sure so what are the must do's for the growth company what should they be focused on probably sounds obvious first thing coming to mind is talent so and uh to be more specific i would say talent acquisition and talent retention so and probably the best way is to to build a strong culture because uh, that's the most effective way to to secure the company team in the long run and to structure the company for growth and uh, and once you've done that the only other element that i could think of would be automation so nowadays is clearly the, the product of many companies but should be also be embedded in many operations of startup themselves so, because there are many low code and no code platforms which are being adopted from mm. citizen developers so uh, like myself and yourself up to up to corporates and this is something that should be adopted because that's one of the of the way that SaaS companies especially even or b2b and software companies can use to to increase productivity so Right. And where do you see companies underinvest in today's market? Underinvest probably well, probably connected to my previous point, culture. So some companies think well, perks and uh, unlimited annual leave can compensate for for a lack of culture, but in our experience that's not true in the long run. And uh, even competitive salaries are less effective because especially in today's nowadays it's uh, fairly easy to push people from competitors because there's a lot of money going on and investors are willing to invest more in companies so the struggle is always how do you t- how do you retain talent so and, and that's not so easy and uh, salaries or perks are, are not the answer cool and where do you see companies over invest these days Overinvest, uh, like this question, and I don't know if you can actually overinvest. So at least, well, if your unit economics are well balanced, I, I guess you cannot overinvest. Uh, but you can overspend definitely. So, and that probably that's a completely different story. And uh, and talking about overspending, yeah, that that's fairly easy. So you can oversize too early, too quickly, can or simply in the wrong time, or uh, clearly that impacts profits and, uh, and, and many other elements of the company. Or, or you can, even worse, you can overspend just to sustain the growth. So investing a lot in customer acquisition, not keep bearing in mind unit economics as well. So customer cost of customer acquisition, exaggeratedly high, for example, but you keep in overspending uh, because you want to keep fundraising. You want to keep uh, your investors happy with uh, high valuations at every round. Uh, but you're just inflating the valuation in that way. And uh, if you don't have a profitable business model, um, that's that's a risky game in the long term. So 
and yeah, we all remember what happened to Uber uh, when when they went into the stock market. So and so unit economics were kind of out of balance slightly, and and the market clearly doesn't appreciate it. So. Right. Well, many companies are out raising funding and they have a goal, but sometimes they don't meet that goal. What do you do when you're short on the fundraise? Who takes the haircut and by how much? That's quite common in my experience. Uh, very polarized. So some companies, they get overfunded, some, and, but majority, I guess, they are underfunded for quite a long period. So, And when in doubt, I think I would prioritize using the investment I got for validation. So whatever that means for that specific company. So if you still need to validate the market, I would temporarily reduce I don't know, cost related to, to the product. If you need to validate the product features or something in that area, I will probably cut temporarily BD and sales. But this is case by case. So I, I would definitely not cut on, on, on another, yeah, uh, what I mentioned earlier. So in hiring, hiring staff, uh, automation, and those are fairly important for kind of securing the, the present as well as the future of the company. Great. Well, in the last few minutes that we have here, what else should we cover that we haven't? Well, just wanted to thank you for, for inviting me and for, for the great question. and. Uh, and just for the audience, uh, if you're a B2B startup or enterprise startup, just reach out so we can help you get in touch with corporates. This is clearly valid also for corporates and for investors. So we have a quite a big deal flow of corporate validated B2B businesses. So And uh, we operate both in the UK and in the US. So we, I'm fairly confident we have something relevant for you. For you. What's the sweet spot for companies that are coming to you? Who are the best fit for your program? Yeah, B two B enterprise. Um, I would say eighty percent software companies, not necessarily SaaS, uh, but we also can go broad, specifically with with some corporate clients. And we covered nowadays, and we've done it also in the past, uh, hardware companies and some something in in the life science. So we haven't done pharma. That's requires very specific skill set. But other than that, uh, majority of the industrial and financial services sectors, so from insurtech to logistic and uh, retail to construction. So we're fairly agnostic. Great. Is it just US only or do you take uh, companies from outside the US? Global. So we always been operating on a global scale. Just, uh, I remember our first investment, so this was 20, 2015, sorry. Uh, we invested in an Australian company and most recent two were a company based in India, another one in the US. So um, clearly majority of the deal flow is between UK and US, but I will say the two markets account for probably 60% of the deal flow. So there's still rest of the world account for around 35, 40%. Great. Well, how best for listeners to get back in touch with you? Um, I would say my email. So simply my name. So Matteo at lmarks.com. Great. We'll include that in the show notes. I want to thank you for joining us today and hope to have you back for a follow-up soon. Thank you. Investor Connect helps investors interested in startup funding. In this podcast series, experienced investors share their experience and advice. You can learn more at InvestorConnect.org. Paul T. Martin is the director of Investor Connect, which is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to the education of investors for early stage funding. All opinions expressed by Hall and podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Investor Connect. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions.